So the next presentation and the last one today will be by Associate Professor Caitlin dosov tay and Teaching Assistant Gabriel Shirak. And they are from the George Asahi Technical University of ERC, Romania. Let's give them a warm welcome. Thank you. We'll try to to entry in uh, in our application what we are uh, proud to to share uh, with you, and not only here. By the way, in your university, because I think this is the role of Ingenium to to spread together the success case. Already we uh, were presented. You understand very well, I think, in the final, why we present, uh, what, why necessary to, to present us, one in immigrant digital and one native digital. The overview of the, of, uh, of the application, what we put for this package, utilizing uh, gaming technology and the practical simulation, we showcase these tools effectiveness in uh, comprehending complex systems. And facing real-time data analytical and uh, feedback, the workshop aims to create vibrant learning experience. Participants will discover the advantage of holographic replicas and their transformative potential in education. This method not only the improved learning outcome, but also cultivate creativity and uh, teamwork. Already in, in uh, time of the presentation, do, do you see already that we have some image and I put here images created by artificial intelligence. Yeah, because we, we play in the ethical, it's very important for, uh, for the new technology, in special for artificial intelligence to work properly from ethical uh, point, of, uh, point of view. Yeah, you already see here a contrast in pedagogical in pedagogical uh, approach, the the the, main, the the very hard reason to 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 shift from the traditional chalk and talk methods to interactive digital learning platform represent a fundamental transformation in the educational practices, accommodating these diverse learning preference and technological advancement. While the importance of, funda uh, of uh, fundamental knowledge in physics and mathematics remain unchanged, the integration of digital tools and resources enhancing understanding, engaging, and application of this principle in real world. The emergence of digital twin and mixed reality technology, because we discuss in special about these uh, two new technology and uh, application in uh, education as a, a important educational tool underscore the potential to create immersive hands-on learning experience that transcend traditional classroom boundaries. Bridging the gap between classical education and digital immersion necessitates a balanced approach, leveraging the best of both worlds to equip students with the skills and knowledge required for success in the rapidly evolving technological landscape. From what part do you think that it's more hardware to do this bridge? My opinion, because I'm the, I'm the immigrant digital, I think to us, not for them, to this, uh, to this, uh, to this switch. Okay. Here it's a real image from this uh, from this time. It's our laboratory. Yeah, it's a it's a laboratory for uh, pneumatic and uh, hydraulic equipment. Uh, laboratory from uh, from um, Department of Automatic Control and Apply and Applied uh, Informatics from uh, Tuyash, and use it by students to learn about the principle and operation, even of a robot of control algorithm. The physical in, in, uh, environment plays a crucial role in the educational process. Adapting to the technological expectation of uh, today's student is essential for effective learning. Modernized facilities are key in bridging theoretical knowledge with practical hands-on experience. Despite the case, 
apart from underlying principle of operation in our laboratory from 80, 90, uh, 90s uh, period to today, remain fundamentally unchanged. But the transforming from a laboratory of 30, 40 years ago, which is represented here, yeah, in the same laboratory, in the same place, no? yeah. but this step, it's a very big step, sometimes not very, very easy to do in the Romanian uh, condition, but we have some uh, support, we found some support from the company which are in the uh, the company involved in the technological revolution in this uh, in this uh, fight and the company like this are behind of uh, they, uh, they are pushing and help us to renew this uh, this uh, laboratory Okay, this was the initial plan. When we do the the work uh, the work uh, package for today, we we divided in uh, after the time in uh, in uh, six parts. But I understood that the format of the presentation is a little bit changing because we are not able to do some uh, workshop here, but to understand much better the idea behind. Yeah. Okay, what we discussed today, that's all. What, I, what we discussed yesterday, everything is behind of industry for zero technology. Yes, and more than this already, what is the impact of this industry for zero technological in education? Already now we discuss about the education for zero. Yeah, we discuss about, uh, I saw a lot of colleagues from, uh, from a medical university, already there we discuss about health for zero. Yeah. Everything come behind of this industry, industry uh, 4.0. To define the term of industry 4.0 only through one word is the digitalization. Yeah, already we know this. And these te this technologies, we put these technologies, okay, which is impact directly the education sector. Yeah, we'll start with digital twin. Already we have, I think, in more uh, in more sectors, not only from our sector because we uh, we came from uh, from engineering uh, uh, university. The simulation it's already uh, powerful uh, powerful tools, which we are able to to work with the student and student relatively easy to understand the, uh, the physical princip principle, but not to forget to remain only in simulation because we push the student in the real life and the real life is the real process. And sometimes there is a gap. The student finalize, uh, they, uh, they uh, finalize the university, but go outside and they understood they are they are afraid because they stay a lot of time in this simulation and not dealing with the process because to the process yeah it's more expensive but we have some ways to exit from this uh, trap yeah with the uh, with the scholarship with the link with the industry with the internship and something like this already we discussed about the first presentation or second presentation from uh, today from the our colleague from uh, from France was with the 3D printing. Yeah, we'll stay a little bit here in extended uh, reality. Already the AI, cloud computer, computer vision. Now autonomous robots already are uh, are uh, there. The advantage of these technologies are numerous. The common denominator underlying all of them it's education that is exciting and flexible letting students acquire knowledge and practice their skill at convenient time the competencies fostered by this technological advantage are the essential one demanding workforces of the future and they include special visualization innovative thinking problem solving creativity and analytical and critical uh, critical thinking. 
I will entry a little bit if it's necessary. If not, we can pass. What understand us with uh, with uh, this uh, uh, technology about the digital twin? The main technology pushing this digital transformation across of of industry is called a digital twin. Or sometimes do you hear about the cyber physical uh, cyber physical system? The digital twin represents a concept associated with the with uh, this cyber physical integration. The digital uh, twin concept came to life in 2002 at the University of Michigan when Professor Greaves introducing during a PLM uh, course, the concept of virtual spaces that was equivalent to a physical product and with a bidirectional communication channel between these two, two spaces. Now there are several different definitions of a digital twin and the essence of all of them stay with the initial concept of mirrored spaces model with bridges of communication between physical world and the virtual world. Few words about the mixed, uh, the mixed reality and we put here in the presentation the entire way from reality to the virtual reality. To the virtual reality. A lot of application start in and uh, impact already the education and other sectors started from uh, from here from the virtual reality. It's in link and the cost. Yeah, the cost is relatively it's relatively cheaper this part with the virtual reality when we are uh, in the immersive way completely. Yeah. And, but now, what is the what is the other other important step is to go in the mixed reality, where it's possible to do this this uh, uh, this combining between virtual reality and augmented reality. Okay, for uh, for this, what is so uh, what is. Uh, what is the other level, the high level, because it's in link with the, with the equipment behind of the mixed reality. Here, we, we work it already in, uh, in our university with the HoloLens uh, glassed. Now, we produce it by, uh, by uh, Microsoft. Yeah, with, with some characteristic, we present some characteristic uh, here. Yeah. The application, the, our application, is is with the uh, with the robot, with the pneumatic, uh, with the pneumatic robot, not very complicated, which is uh, which transforms the energy from compressed air in some mechanical uh, uh, mechanical energy. Yeah, it's uh, it's a three degree of freedom uh, robot. 3D because one is the revolut and not the two translation. Yeah. The target, what is what is the what is the task of this uh, of this uh, uh, cylindrical robot is to manipulate to get, uh, through a gripper in the end to manipulate something. Yeah, it's relatively simple uh, simple robot controlled by uh, controlled by a PLC. Yeah, the application is relatively complicated behind of to control this this cylinder. Yeah, where the where the pressure is the is the the main agent to control. You will see the control the position because usually the cylinder the pneumatic cylinder make the entire stroke. Yeah, not uh, usually to work in. Uh, in different uh, in different position. Yeah, already here it's uh, already we started to enter a little bit in the in the application. The application is made in Unity in Unity software. Unity is a powerful game engine and development platform that is primarily used for creating high quality three D games and interactive simulation. While Unity is not designed for creating digital twin, its 3D modeling and interactivity capability can certainly be leveraged 
for that purpose. Digital twin are virtual replica of physical system. Unity can provide a powerful tool for creating and exploring those replica in the highly immersive and interactive way, where the external environment can influence the digital twin behavior. Here is the way to create the, the digital uh, twin in, uh, in uh, Unity system. Practical, what, what, what is the, what is the, the impact of uh, this uh, technological revolution? Is the idea to do, to, to move already some major technology like here, like the like uh, 3D gaming, in the to impact another uh, another perspective. Now we discuss about this gaming to impact educational, to impact you will see augmented uh, team with, uh, through this uh, through this uh, equipment HoloLens uh, tool. Yeah. Now is the time to transition to make out to make the transition like my uh, my uh, younger colleague to present some uh, movie. But by the way, after the presentation from here, will be possible to to do some uh, to do some uh, experience here. Okay, was very hard for us to put here the robot, but like this, we'll put the digital twin of the robot and we'll uh, play a little bit. Yeah, I will invite my colleague to to present you start to to talk and discuss. Um, hello, uh, as we do at uh, at the laboratories, having the theory the theory behind. Now we can see some uh, practical uh, some practic uh, practical usage of the technologies presented. So uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Okay, first of all, the video runs uh, really quick. Um, let's see, uh, we have the, the real robot here and uh, a user that uh, wears the, the HoloLens device. So uh, on, on, the, on the robot, we have a QR code. And the, as you can see uh, there, the user scans the QR code to instantiate the digital twin. In this moment, uh, what we wanted to do was to overlap the digital twin over the, the real robot. So we can, um, in the first step, to control the, only the digital twin, but afterwards to connect the digital twin to the real robot. How is this uh, made? Uh, it, it, we established a communication between the HoloLens device and the, uh, robot, the real robot's controller. Uh, okay, let's move forward and see that uh, the user will scan the QR code. As you can see, the digital twin overlaps the real robot, but uh, they are not in the same position. Uh, this is uh, because they are now, right now, they are not communicating. We can only uh, right now play with uh, the digital twin. Uh, this, uh, this thing we'll do today if we want to test uh, the application. And we'll see that we can control uh, all of uh, the degrees of, uh, of freedom. And now, also, you can see some danger zones for the, for the uh, robot. Uh, the main uh, purpose is to, uh, when, when you want to use uh, the real robot and the digital twin is overlapped, so it helps us to see where we should not be, okay? <laughs> If we get too closer to the robot, uh, the user will see a pop-up that tells him that he's in the danger zone. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, let's let's go forward. Also, we have a menu where we can, as I said, uh, first we control on the the digital twin through this menu. But after we activate the manual mode, you'll see that first is the button here. Uh, that button uh, tries to, uh, when press that button, the functionality behind this to establish the communication between the digital twin uh, and, the, and the real robot. And you'll see that uh, an important thing to see, because it uh, runs really fast, you'll see that the digital twin will, will uh, imitate the position of the, the real robot. 
so it will make a move, a move to to right, I guess. Let's see. Yes, you you could see that the, the digital twin uh, copied the the real robot's position. Uh, this means that the connection was established. So now, uh, every move we do, uh, we tell the digital twin to, to make, it will translate also uh, on the real robot side. And uh, of course, if we if we make some, uh, if the real robot will, will move, also the digital twin, uh, digital, digital twin will uh, imitate. Let's see what happens next. Yes, the digital twin mirrors the robot's position. Right now, uh, as you can see, the user does nothing, okay? He's just standing there and someone controls the robot and uh, it makes, uh, it changes its height, okay? And you see that digital twin uh, mirrors the those changes. As you can see uh, down there, yes, the robot is cu currently moved by changing the values of its coils via personal computer. Move to the left, okay. And right now, see uh, nothing happens for the user. And I move to the right. Uh, you can see also the updates on the menu. I don't know if you could see. <laughs> there is a slider that indicates which height, okay. And uh, you jumped from 50 to, to zero. This means that they are communicating. Okay, now we'll see that. Uh, um, how the user uh, moves uh, moves the robot, okay, via uh, the communication established and uh, practical via via the uh, the menu. He'll now move the uh, the robot to the left, okay. Uh, as you could see, the digital twin uh, imitates the the moves. Uh, no, let's say the real robot imitates the most, okay, because we control the digital twin, but also the command goes to the to the real robot. Okay, a back uh, a back movement and one forward movement. Okay, now uh, you can see the how the user modifies the height of the robot using also the menu and the same thing. Okay, uh, the real robot uh, uh, imitates the, or mirrors the, the digital pin movement. Uh, there are some, Okay, let's see. Now uh, we actually we action the the gripper. Okay, and uh, the this was the first uh, the first movie. Uh, as you can see, there might be some uh, problems with uh, the movement of, of the digital twin. Of course, the, there are problems because of the the connection established between them. Okay, let's see the, the second video. Here, what we did is something like in the, in the multiplayer games, okay? Because we have Unity in the background, it uses the technology of the multiplayer games where two, two players, let's say, they come in the same lobby. And here, um, as you can see here, we both wear the the device, the HoloLens 2 device, and uh, each of us will see the same changes to the to the digital twin. Okay, if I made a, a change to the digital twin, the other one uh, would say uh, will uh, see the change. Okay, but first of all, uh, the main purpose of this uh, part of the application is to, as uh, it writes there, the technician starts a connection with the non with the non technician. What uh, does this mean? It means that we can make remote uh, instruction, let's say, uh, remote uh, practice. So if we have a technician that uh, is somewhere in the world, let's say, and a person that is not very well trained, those two person can, persons can uh, establish uh, communication 
on uh, audio video communication and uh, you will see uh, in this video how they can communicate uh, through through the application right now they will establish the the connection between uh, the connection between the technician and non technician will be established the first user uh, cho chooses uh, what type of person he is he is a technician okay and uh, in this little window he will see what the second the non technician sees okay uh, now the uh, the connection is establishing okay so we uh, we need to wait a little to see the the connection being established okay now that now that the uh, the connection is is uh, established you can see here what the, the other user sees the non technician as you can see the non technician has a menu the same menu uh, is for the for, for the technician and you see uh, how the changes will be done yeah it writes down there also the because the connection is established and the technician starts to observe what the non technician mm -hmm. does okay let's move forward now the same thing and uh, as in the last uh, video uh, each each user will scan the qr code of course the technician can can another qr code to where uh, where he is to instantiate and the scene the the digital twin now the as the digital twin is overlapped over the rear robot We'll uh, see the some functionalities that the both user uh, will see and in the same time. Okay, now the non technician try, tries to connect the PSC via Modpass. Okay, so we establish the same uh, communication as we presented in the last video. Yeah, we connect the the HoloLens device to to the robot's controller, and as you can see. One second. So what you see here is uh, the view of the technician. Okay, you'll see that some buttons from here will move. Why? Because the non-technician tries to uh, to establish the connection uh, by pressing the the manual mode. Okay, you see that I will here I will press the buttons from my view, and uh, the technician will see how the button is pressed by me. Yeah, you can see also if you if you can see uh, here uh, you can see what what my view is and when I'm pressing the buttons the button oh. okay it was the the first iteration of the app so the the connection. Uh, Took long, uh, took much longer to to establish to be established. Okay, the button is pressed and the manual mode is not activated, or the connection fails. As you can see, the uh, digital twin uh, does not uh, mirrors the the position of the red robot. And uh, as you can see down here, the hologram will be the only that moves. So. Uh, as in the last video, when the connection established is established, the digital twin uh, will will uh, mirror the the rear robot's uh, the rear robot's position. Okay, so uh, until now, uh, the non technician used uh, the buttons to control the the rear robot and also the, the digital twin, and now you see that the technician can do the same. When pressing the buttons, okay, but he'll see that the he controls the digital twin, and also, but with the connection established, we control the the real robot. Yeah. 
is not very clear, but here the the, the non technician will see this exact exactly the same things as uh, the the technician. <laughs> Okay, you, uh, here you can see uh, how uh, this how this is the same thing. Okay, here the non technician will move the slider, and you will see that it moves uh, also for the for the technician, and also the the digital twin will uh, will modify his uh, height. Okay. And yet the, the movements are synchronized with uh, one another. We'll have a part where, where, uh, you, where, you, where you can see the, the, what happens when we are in the danger zone. Uh, the main purpose of, the, of that functionality is to not let the, the user to uh, initiate moves on the robot while he's uh, in the danger zone of the of the robot. But more than this, it's possible to transform a real robot in the collaborative, the collaborative robot. When I end in their zone and he recognizes that the person what is uh, with the hollow lens, he may definitely stop the move. According to Asimov rules. But according to Asimov rules. Yeah, robot does not have humans. Yeah, but no, exactly. <laughs> the, the already there. By the way, the this uh, technology, I think it's already used it in the in the medical, in the surgery. Yeah, the specialist, it's I don't know where, and the other it's in front of the patient, and uh, with uh, this uh, with this uh, glasses, he's able to to do. You know, Okay, some uh, our method involves a blended approach, incorporated both in person and digital interaction with advanced technology like digital twins and mixed reality. Lessons, comments with uh, theoretical introduction, progress through a hands on interactive with the digital uh, twin. Educator will need access to to mixed reality equipment such as uh, HoloLens headset, compatible software like Unity and devices uh, capable of supporting this technology such as high performance uh, computer. Now here we capture some, uh, some uh, moments of discovery and interaction as a student navigates with the uh, with the realms of digital twin and mixed reality. This snapshot from our laboratory session reflects the vibrant engagement and the hands-on exploration that define our cutting edge educational approach. The image, the interesting image is from this part because it's not possible like uh, one initiative to, to impact, yeah, only one initiative to impact for example, our or our program in university. And more than this, for example, together with my colleague, because I'm the coordinator of, uh, of uh, Innovation Center for Digital Twin and Extended Reality, I put, to, I put my colleague, professor from different, uh, from different uh, faculty to, to make some experiments, more than this, something in the university, for example, can, we can uh, we can exchange with you some application, not our application, but uh, some uh, medical application, for example, that is useful for the uh, professor and the uh, and uh, and the student. Yeah, and more than this, we prepared it for uh, this session. Student feedback. Yeah, they already they already uh, receive a quiz. To, to share with us, with you, some uh, th their experience about, uh, about um, what is your opinion, their opinion about, uh, about uh, this. The feedback collected serves an important metric, not just to go the success of our integration effort, but also to highlight areas for enhancement. Here we present a snapshot of the student responses, illuminating the tangible impact of stepping out of the conventional teaching comfort zone into real um, 
where the technology meets pedagogy. These insights are vital for us to understand the student experience and ensure that our teaching strategy are truly resonant and uh, effective. The survey reveals a high familiarity with the XR uh, technology, in special with, uh, with uh, VR, among students with their, exp uh, their exposure to mobile and video games. Moreover, the strong preference for extended reality over the traditional method cited for its uh, accessibility enhances the visual understanding and interactive capabilities highlights the need for modern teaching approaches that align the student technological adeptness and learning preferences. Yeah. The survey not only highlights the student appreciation for the role of mixed reality in learning, but also relieved the anonymous increase in motivation and engagement, which is very important for, uh, for us like teacher and for uh, them like, uh, like the result of this, uh, our process of learning. This 100% feedback signifies that the innovative teaching method not only has comprehension, but also actively ignite student participation. This demonstrates that by incorporating this advanced technology into our teaching, we are not just preparing students for the future of the industry, but also sparking their enthusiasm and commitment to learn process uh, itself. Uh, they, already, they already want to continue and to be, to be involved. My younger colleague, already worked with, uh, with, uh, with them. Yeah, you already see that uh, more than this, what is very important uh, for us, that the student want to be involved in, uh, to do application for this, because the games, yeah, it's in their mind from the very young period. Yeah. More than this, sometimes we have some inquiry to accept to access our to access this uh, technology not only in laboratory because in this moment we have the force to do only one uh, one uh, uh, laboratory from twelve. We are not able to to change a little bit, change more. Yeah, it's a long process, not very easy for us, not very easy for entire infrastructure. Some conclusion here we have, yeah, already we discussed it. What is the, what is the impact of uh, this? Yeah, what is the next, uh, the next step maybe? Already do you see we, we put in this ocean other colleagues. We are, I'm involved with to, to manage another 20 application for all uh, faculties in our university we are 11 faculties okay we 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 broken the the wall we are from uh, from uh, from computer science and the automation uh, control uh, faculty okay it was easy for us but we are able to help another colleagues i don't know from architecture for example yeah from uh, chemical uh, engineering yeah, from mechanical to to enter in this uh, to enter in this uh, new method. Okay, here I've already put some uh, some uh, references. What is very important? Okay, we 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 touch a small uh, peak already because we are uh, near of the near of the teacher. We are the researcher. Yeah, already put and we. Uh, we spread in a few conferences. In, in. Okay, thank you, thank you very much for uh, for your attention. Okay, we'll we'll present uh, in few minutes our application for uh, mixed uh, reality and uh, digital twin for a pneumatic uh, robot. My uh, younger colleague will. Uh, uh, we'll open an application, we'll uh, 
scan the QR code and we'll put here the digital replica of the uh, pneumatic robot. And after this, he will interfere with the holographic uh, robot to do some moving and something like this. Now, please uh, come and uh, scan, the, scan the QR code and immediately I will uh, show you uh, what my uh, colleague uh, see through the HoloLens uh, two glasses from uh, Microsoft. You already see it? Sure. Okay, only a moment to share my... Uh... Dire screen, dire screen. Okay, you can uh, you can see the digital replica of the pneumatic uh, robot. Yeah, the digital uh, replica, holographic replica. It is moving by my colleague through pushing the digital uh, twin from the holographic. Uh, yeah. There are simple uh, moving for different uh, cylinder. Behind is the, the gaming uh, technology which impact the industrial and education uh, sector. A little bit latency. Yeah, one moment. Another double. Yeah. 
open uh, open source platform to do it or is it or yeah, yeah yeah this you mean the uh, yeah yeah it's from the other part so we connect to the thing And we can see what the uh, front and back, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, left and right. Now, rotational moving, and now you will see the up and down chassis of, uh, of the robot. Yeah, it's a slider up and down. You will see here the total stroke of 200 millimeters. And he's able to move. Now it's in the maximum amplitude. Yeah, 200 millimeters. Okay. Yes. Yes. This was the entire application where we proved that uh, uh, the my colleague moved the holographic uh, cylinder from different uh, position. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>